All right, welcome to part four of my video series examining Karl Bau's creation in the 21st century. Uh, this episode is called Preponderance of Evidence and features John Hefner. Uh, he was, I left off, he was discussing the fact that human evolution is impossible because based on the logistic, gro the, I'm sorry, based on the exponential growth equation, if the Earth was indeed as old as we say it is, then there would be hundreds of trillions of trillions of humans instead of six and a half billion, as the Bible suggests there should be. They must never have crunched their numbers because if they had, they would get this number of people, 2.45, but we'd have to move the decimal. 990 places to the right, oh, which right. is more people than there are electrons that could be packed into the known universe. Professor, you so, have just blown evolution out of the courtroom well, and out of the courthouse. Certainly their scenario there does not work. And, uh, and here's what that number looks like, Dr. Ball, to actually show the audience. Now we know the real world is this right here. If we wake up six smell and the coffee, this is six and a half billion written out. Yes. This is the evolutionary number that you would get using that data. So I am really tired of these uh, anti-science creationists out there trying to, trying to uh, destroy the scientific concept of last Tuesdayism, okay? Uh, because they claim the Earth is six and a half billion year, or six and a half thousand years old, I'm sorry. Um, when all of the science points to the fact that the Earth was created about two days ago. Um, and I can prove it. Okay, scientists estimate that on Earth today, there are approximately 5 times 10 to the 30 bacteria. That's a million, 5 million trillion trillion bacteria living on Earth. Um, now, it's a fact that on average, uh, bacteria doubling time is about every 30 minutes. The bacteria will double in population size. Okay, so plugging that in to the uh, the exponential growth equation, it's clear that if indeed the Earth were, as they say, um, 6,500 years ago, on Earth today, there would be, uh, I, I, it, it was hard to calculate out, I had to do a kind of a rough estimate, but it came out to be about 2.7 times 10 to the 6 billion. Now to understand how big that number is, if I were to show you on the screen that number, um, what it would be is in in using a what, what, twelve point font, that would be about two million pages of nothing but zeros. That means that if I showed you ten pages per second, it would still take two days, eight hours for me to just show you that number. Okay, obviously, there are not that many bacteria in existence. Obviously, there's trillions upon trillions upon trillions ad infinitum less bacteria than that so therefore the earth was created by my reckoning this is in alaska time about 7 a.m on tuesday was when the earth was created uh just you know so you know um and by the way if, if in case you're interested in looking at that number uh, it turns out that we have a, a fairly good solid estimate as to when the when the end of existence is should be sometime around next week when the number of bacteria in existence exceeds the known volume of the universe so just keep that in mind uh, that's pretty much going to be the end of all things by the same logic absolutely right impossible in fact and this is truth and this is truth mm -hmm. I've heard it stated and that's just uh, half a million years and according to the theory of evolution uh, Dawn Man and his girlfriend arrived about two and a half million years ago. In case you're uh, unaware, by the way, Dawn Man that he was referring to, Dawn Man is otherwise known as Eoanthropus, or otherwise more popularly known as Piltdown Man. Because as we know, Piltdown Man is a prominent feature in all of our evolutionary textbooks. We, you know, we still hold it as the, as the missing link. Um, that that in fact, the entire theory of evolution depends solely on the existence of Dawn Man. So we come to 2.5 times 10 to the 990th. I'm sure you realize there's not enough space in the universe, mm -mm. not only on planet Earth, not enough space in the universe for that many bodies. Right. So each each uh, zero is 10 times the number that precedes it. Yes. And so you have multiplied by 10 many, many times here, and it's a mind-boggling number. Oh, it's absolutely impossible. Now, so the preponderance of evidence so far that you've given us mm -hmm. is solidly in the corner of a creation. Well, 
All right, I'm back to the whiteboard again. Just for a second, I want to show one. I want to illustrate a point uh, before I go on. Before we go on to show more of his stuff here, uh, because he kind of contradicts himself in in the next the next bit I'm going to show. Uh, but when you look at the the equation here, the exponential growth equation, this is the form it commonly takes, and this is a graph of that equation. Now I've kind of exaggerated the scale a little bit. Uh, so you can so, so to visualize easier. So this is population size in this is time. Uh, what you see with this is it's always th the curve always takes this form. It's always a an exponential increase, and because it's a a exponential increase, it's a logarithmic increase. Uh, each each in each increment of time increase, think of it as an order of magnitude increase in population. Um, so what that means is is when you get to later times. Uh, you know your numbers are are multiplying by ten with each change in time. Um, big big changes are happening fast, so these population sizes become unreasonable. That's how he got his nine you know ten to the nine hundred something number. Um, it doesn't take long in an ex in a in a exponential growth equation to get those kinds of numbers. But the other side of it is when you get down to these down on this end of it, the number increments, while they, they're still going up exponentially, it takes a while sort of for that to build up. So th these usually have a long, long tail. If I were to graph this um, to show you a graph, and I will show a graph um, of his numbers, OK? Um, this actually hugs the zero line for a long time before you see any increase. Um, you can't, you have to zoom in a lot to see uh, the actual change in them. So to illustrate the. Uh, what this population growth means, exponential population population growth means, in the sense of as Hefner is is uh, proposing it here at least, um, is you see looking at the scale. This is now this is only from the flood until the birth of Jesus. Okay, I'm only looking at at the first two thousand five hundred years after the flood. As I was saying, you see that the the population size hugs the the pretty close to the zero mark. Um, the x-axis for a while, and then it starts to go up rapidly. Um, but one of the an easier way to visualize a an exponential growth curve is to plot population on a log scale. Uh, there, there you see that makes the it makes the curve into a straight line where each increase up is 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 exponential. So it's it's ten times greater than the one before it. Um, so what that sh what looking at this here, uh, you see that. Again, population of eight at the Great Flood, um, ending at the birth of Jesus. So let's. But I just wanted to, to show how ridiculous this is. Like I said, because these populations are going to start off small, um, and they're going to grow relatively slowly um, in the beginning. So here's some actual numbers plugging in to, to the data that he gave. Um, this is now again his half a percent um, growth rate that he gave. This is his. The one that leads to the current world population of six billion, six and a half billion. So at the Great Flood, population eight. Tower of Babel, the entire world population was seventy-eight. Uh, the Exodus, one of the great m periods in in, in Jewish history, uh, the entire world population was three thousand. Uh, when the, when the when the second great king of Israel and and perhaps the greatest king of Israel, uh, King David, the population of the entire earth was seven thousand five hundred. Um, towards the end of the Old Testament, Babylonian exile in in about six hundred B.C., uh, the entire world population was forty six thousand people, and the birth of Jesus, the greatest. The single most greatest event in world history, according to Christians, uh, the entire population of the planet was 700,000. Uh, looking at the at the rest of the world, the entire Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms of ancient Egypt all took place when the Earth world's population was about 4,000 or less. That includes the building of the Great Pyramids, the Sphinx, and and such. Uh, the Great Battle of Thermopylae took place. Uh, Again, the world population was about 80,000 during that time, um, which is significantly less than just the people taking place. Apparently, it was the Spartans against every man, woman, and child in the rest of the Earth's population. Um, and finally, Teotihuacan, to kind of arbitrarily pick, um, there was, I, I believe, was it uh, 280,000 people on the Earth during, at that time, uh, 200,000 of which lived in Teotihuacan. So uh, apparently 70% of the world's population were living uh, just outside of Mexico City um, at 200 BCE.
this. Um, but I want to just I want to talk briefly um, about this. The, the problem with this thing with this this equation is is that again it starts off with this low population size. Um, it also starts off at it assumes a whole lot of things. Now, like I said, this works with if you take a, you have a sterilized tray, a medi- you know, of medium food, and you drop one bacteria in the middle of that. It's going to follow this equation. It's going to follow this pretty well, um, it, because of the fact that it's increasing. It it has unlimited space and unlimited food. Um, what you'll see if you were to actually measure that in the real world is you would see this start to tail off at the top as it ran out of food. Okay, and then this would be its its thing. But typically, when you see a real growth equation, and this is not this equation here, what you see when we look at populations, if you don't mind, sorry, is you look at a population, you see a stable population size. And you may see go up and go down, go up and go down. But typically, this is because R remains on average zero. Okay? Um, this is typical. Um, and this w- this is the line that would have described the human population for most of human existence. Um, what we saw, if you look at the human human existences, is that you see right at the end, uh, just in the last two centuries, you see this starting to go up. It starts to mirror this curve because of um, not with, not that we have unlimited food and unlimited growth, but it, so in relative terms, we've suddenly dramatically increased uh, medicine. Uh, we've decreased death, increased births, and new technologies for growing food. So we actually are following this. Now this this is obviously is tapering off, is not going to go on forever, cannot go on uh, for even a short period of time longer. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's his mess up. I mean, by the same logic that he gave, by the same equation he gave, for example, looking at elephants, I mean, elephants are fairly slow reproducing. Um, by that same logic, if the earth was, if the flood was 4,500 years ago, uh, we should be, we should literally be house high in elephants covering the entire earth. I estimated there'd be about 17 billion elephants alive today following a very conservative growth curve for elephants. It gets worse for them even. We don't know exactly what the human po- uh, population growth curve looked like. We do have data, uh, just data points right in here a little ways and yes. we can do what's called an exponential regression and come yes. up with this equation and this is a well accepted equation in secular books but I think this is probably pretty reasonable that, uh, you know, there's eight human beings. That's why we're so close to the zero line right yes. here. Then rapid growth due to a pristine environment, no mm-hmm. pollution, genetic vigor, num- numerous reasons, plenty of food and so forth. And then maybe it was somewhat sawtoothed in here, and then we saw exponential growth. And All right, way to pwn yourself. Um, the curve he shows there in that illustration is not the exponential growth curve. It's not described by the equation that he gave at all. It's actually what's called the logistic growth equation. It's a little bit different. Um, you note that he starts off with a population of eight and then rapidly grows to 500 million, where it stays stable for 4,000 years until it starts to grow again. Um, that curve is actually, with the numbers are, are different, but that curve is actually what we have seen in the human population. Um, we see st- stability. But this is what makes, this is what's really, really pathetic. First of all, 8 to 500 million in 500 years um, is a rate of growth that un- unseen in the human species, and I'm going to suggest beyond the capabilities of human reproductive potential. Um, but that aside, uh, even allowing for that, if you can have Um, 4,000 years of the human population staying stable, that's R remaining around zero, why can't it be 10,000 years of R remaining around zero? And if you can have 10,000 years, why not 20? And if you can have 20, why not 100? And if you can have 100, why not 500? So 500,000 years, why can't, if, if if he's going to allow for that number, 500 million to stay stable are to remain around zero for 4,000 years before modern technology allows it to increase, then he's just defeated, he's just absolutely explained away his supposed argument. 